Hello there, lovely. Thanks a bunch for downloading my wee podcast. Very nice of you. Thanks. Take a second to imagine, if you will, that this podcast is a greasy laminated menu in a crap cafe. I believe it would read a little like such. I chat Crash Bandicoot with former XFM breakfast show host Dave Berry and watch in horror as he calls somebody a dildo and admits he can't play Call of Duty for shit. On top of that, we'll also be discussing the tale of a homeless dwarf who dressed up as a school child to steal pens from a school. And I speak to Les Porter, the mad head of climate change, the organisation for money getting hotter. Things you you cannot afford to miss, boys and girls. Enjoy. I am joined on the phone now by Alan Kemp from the organisation Climate Change. Is that correct? Uh, my, my name is actually Leslie Porter, but uh, my, my friend calls me Les. So. Oh, uh, don't worry, let's move on. Um, but you are from the organisation Climate Change. Is that, is, is that right? Yes, yes, that's accurate. OK, good. So could you explain what it is that climate change do? Because the emphasis is, isn't on climate, it's on change, isn't it? It's... Yes, yes, of course. Well, yep. climate change is an organisation set up by oneself and uh, my good friend Philip. How good of a friend? Well, he's all right. Depends if he's had a bourbon or not. What, whiskey? Biscuit. So we set up the group to monitor a situation that we are very very concerned about. That seems to be getting no attention whatsoever by, you know, from the mainstream press. And what is that exactly? We are, the two of us are very, very concerned indeed, but we're very, we're very worried that money is getting hotter. Money's getting hotter? Yes, specifically coins. Could you expand on that at all, or...? No. Yeah, if that's okay. Well, yes, I suppose I'll say my lunch later then, shall I? Mm. Shall I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, well, just the other day I was in... Well, um, I suppose I can't say on the radio, can I? Stupid modern world, honestly. There I was in a generic supermarket purchasing nine pounds worth of tasty breakfast treats. Now, there I was offering a ten... Pound note, a tenner, I think you children are calling them, I don't know. And when the clerk handed me my one pound coin in change, the point in question was absurdly hot. I mean, really quite uncomfortable. I mean, it didn't burn, but it certainly wasn't very nice, not, not it, nice at all. It didn't burn? Of course not. It's not that hot. That's an absurd notion. How hot was it then? Well... Enough to make the palm of my hand a sweat. I mean, listen to this. Just listen. I'm going to clap the affected hand. Now, this is just a singular hand clap. Now, silence would be appreciated. OK. Um, could, we, could we practice the silence? Is that good? OK, that was good. Yeah. OK. Now, just listen to how clammy this is. Far, far too clammy. Oh, that is warm, isn't it? Today we are discussing disguises. Colin Morton, a homeless fellow with dwarfism in Southampton, was caught posing as a school child. The admission was made after he revealed he couldn't afford pens and pencils, wanted to be a writer, and thus dressed up as a child to steal them from school. His parents were two regularly sized chums who wanted a share of the plunder and claimed he was disabled when the teachers noticed he had a bit of a hairy face. No, I know I was in school with a guy who had dwarfism, and he was a nice chap, you know. So Would he steal pencils? He wouldn't steal pencils, no. Fair play to him, I suppose, isn't it, really? He's got into trouble, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he would do, being an adult in a school. So, um, if you, his name's Colin. If you, um, Colin. If you could meet him, what would you say to Colin? I'd say, uh, behave, lad, and uh, see me on a Tuesday or Wednesday and I'll buy you some paper. I think it's idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> are you allowed, you're not allowed to stay in midgets, are you, anymore? I don't I think, know. I didn't think it was PC to stay in midget. What, can I, what should I have person. said? Small person. <laughs> well, not very good, really. 
to teach children that anyway. You know, whether the story affected the children in any shape or form. I think the children are safe, but some did complain they didn't have any pens left. Well, that's not a very good idea, are you? get too many funny characters around when you start that, didn't you? you pretend you're to be something else, you're not. If you were a dwarf, what would you use your height in advantage for? Are you saying it because I'm short? Why was he taking pens? He can't afford stationery. Well, there's plenty of that that goes on in the world. And he needs to grow up. Mm. Well, because I'm a Christian, I, I think it's not right. I would direct him in the words of Jesus and say, um, you must... Um, do the right thing in the eyes of the Lord <laughs> and um, you must seek help if you can't, you know, Full get what you right. need, yeah. Why not just go to Smith's and pinch it from there? It's £1.50 for three biros now. Yeah, if you pinch them, it's nothing. Two trailer park girls go round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Question here from Jess Bracey. Um, if you were at uni, you didn't go to uni, did you? No, no. Um, what uni... Oh, God, you're from South London, you didn't go to uni. <laughs> How have you possibly fucking lived? <laughs> um, thanks, Dave. <laughs> um, what course would you be on? It's just like for your producer to beat, but give him something to do. <laughs> um, yeah, what course would you be on? And it can be made up, it doesn't have to be a real course. Like, do you know, I, I went as far as A-levels, and I thoroughly enjoyed drama. Um, and I would probably have kind of continued to do that. I would have tried my damnedest to get into a, a Rada or a Weber Douglas or something like that, I'd imagine. But at the time, for me, it just was more important to have some money. And, and, that's, and that's, the, that's the long and short of it, really. And I had a little job in a vintage clothes shop, and they were like, Dave, you can have as many shifts as you like, coming in here, playing great cool tunes, meeting, you know, wicked people, and just hanging around all day, trying clothes on. It was like, do I want to do this, or should I go and do double sociology this afternoon? So if you hadn't met Ash, the guy that broke you, the guy that you met <laughs> at a child's in athletic game. Yeah, that guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that fella there. Yeah. If he, uh, if you guys didn't meet and you thought, now nah, I'm just going to stay home and watch Jeremy Kyle on the telly or whatever, where do you think you would be now if you hadn't done that? Do before? you know, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm, I've always been very motivated. I can't, you know, even holidays, like, you know, my missus finds it an absolute nightmare because if we go away for two weeks, about 10 days in, I'm like itching to get back and I'm always ringing my agent. I'm always trying to write stuff and come up with crazy schemes and ideas and I'm just not someone who rests quite easily. So I probably would have, at the time I was club promoting, doing, I had a night called Hipster Flipster. I had another one called Superhero Sunday and I did quite a lot of stuff around student unions and I really enjoyed that, you know, booking the DJs, finding a little theme, you know, posters and flyers and, you know, I probably would have kind of got more involved in that. In fact, we got offered an arch at London Bridge, which is like a massive thing to be asked. Mm. to have um, but I got frightened off by uh, gangsters proper genuine gangsters yes guy everything mummy and daddy it. told you <laughs> is absolutely true Good. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much you're too pretty <laughs> <laughs> guy have you you know have you, I what? Are you a homosexual man? Are you a straight man? I am a straight man but it's very hard to tell sometimes no 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 I was just wondering if you know after the show See. I can be turned. Um, I'll take that back if you like. I don't mind. That's fine. Yeah, um, to know. Now, you're rumoured to be a bit of a lover of the old vintage games. Is that true? Oh, yeah. this is this Twitter? No. Oh, right. No, this, I, this, I got drunk and for some reason started twit picking that's pictures always of a mistake, old... Though. Yeah, yeah. twit picking pictures of old games consoles. So but, it's not the old like spinning tops on the floor? No, not those no, no like, uh, the, like the Super Nintendo the from like 1992. Um... I just, do you know, I don't know why, but I, I've just kept them all. Mm. And then I finally got a, a house big enough to uh, have a little room to call my, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, you Your know, games I'm, room. Yeah, a, it's yeah. called the games room. There's no billiard table here or anything like that. But um, Lies. I play, uh, <laughs> I, I play the PlayStation 3 and I play FIFA mm. effectively. And I don't know, the other things are just stuff that I quite like because I find them aesthetically pleasing, you know. The Atari 2600, which would mean nothing to anybody, is like a just a brown piece of wood. It was like the one with Space Invaders on it. It doesn't work, but I just I look at it as a piece of furniture or a piece of art. They're lovely, aren't they? Nice I, I think they are. And it's it's odd. It's odd, but it's just my little one of my little many quirks. So Crash Bandicoot or Call of Duty, you have to make a choice. You're not allowed to choose both. Crash by far. 
because I'm useless at first person shooters and it's so frustrating because that seems to be where games are going and my dad is an, is an amazing gamer randomly and he plays them all and he tells me about the intricacies of the plot lines and what's going on and where he is at the moment in this mission and it sounds so great and then I get it and I I feel the pressure like if there's something coming towards me and it's kind of the crosshairs is going everywhere and I go just please shoot him Dave <laughs> I am still joined here by Alan Kemp from Climate Change. That's Les, uh, Les Porter. My name is Les Porter. We've been over this. Please do try to get it right. That's, that's, that's what I said. I'm sorry. So I am still here with Alan Kemp, head of the Climate Change. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. What is this? Is that <laughs> Tom Foolery? I'm not a fan of Tom Foolery. I will not tolerate Tom Foolery. Please do not make a mockery of me, OK? It's a very, very serious issue, OK? If you're, if you're just making fun <laughs> of me, I'd just hang up right now. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Deirdre how you do. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with a laugh, OK? I know you're young and you like to have a laugh, OK? I've, I've been known to have a laugh myself from time to time. Okay? Off the top of my head, I can think of at least... There's, um, there's a time me and, me and Philip ordered skirting boards, sent them to a different house. Um, there's a laugh... Um, there was, a, there was a time at the uh, swimming pool and the, uh, and the girl fell over her shirt. <laughs> that was amusing. Um, yeah, it yes, does sound amusing. Uh, yeah. And the uh, that duck. Well, yes, right, but I can think of at least three occasions, okay, when I've had a laugh, quite the laugh at me, but I will not be dealing with tomfoolery. Must just be my answer. Let's move on. Les, um, so I'm still here with Alan Kemp, who's discussing quite how hot he thinks money is getting. You're getting very concerned about this, aren't you? Oh, very, very concerned, yes. Yeah. On a scale of one to concern, how concerned would you say you are concerned? Definitely a four. That's a, that's a very... That's a, that's a four in, in bold font. An, an underlined and, uh, four. Pff, wow, and, that, and that's... Perhaps, a, perhaps in red uh, is as that, well, a, a red four. What's that out of? A five. Wow, that that really is concern, I suppose, isn't it? That's... On far too many occasions, I have. Please don't interrupt me. I, I didn't. Don't worry. It's fine. I, I could hear that you were going to. I wasn't. Don't worry. Let's... I can tell from the way <laughs> that I can tell from the particular way in which you took that nasal intake. You intended to interrupt. Me. I really, really didn't. Let's cons. Let's, there know, was let's a count... sharp. Intake of breath toward your nasal region. I've got, I've got a degree in sociology that was preempting an interruption. I am very sorry. On far too many an occasion, I have found myself parched in wanting of a light beverage, something perhaps lemon in flavour, maybe even lemon and lime. Mm, do be careful. And I have reached into my wallet with my hand at a perfectly moderate temperature. Yet upon grabbing onto the coin, particularly the pounds, my hands increase significantly in warmth. So, if I held the coins against the mic, it, you know, feel free to interrupt me if, if I'm wrong. You could, what you're saying is you could feel the warmth and guess what they are. Oh, yes, for sure, but, you know, surely anyone could. I don't think anyone can. Right, let's, let's do a, a quick experiment here. Let's, I don't know why I'm I... doing this. I'm... Okay. I have a coin in both hands, okay? Oh, right, okay. Right, we're, going to do an ex we're going to do an experiment. I'm just going to hold the first coin to the mic. You've got to guess what the coin is. You know, you say you can do this. I disagree. Let's have a look. Okay, holding the first coin to the mic now. Can you feel it? That, that really is very warm, actually. That, that, that particular coin is very warm indeed. Um... I'm not comfortable being around that at all, actually. Do you know what that? Do you know what the coin is? Um, that, uh, it's quite a dangerous hit. Um, most certainly a pound. <laughs> Incredible! Amazing. Are you sure you're not in front of a computer? Um, no, no sorry. Could you, um, is there any chance you could bring it back to the mic, uh, to the microphone again? It's just bring it, bring it back to the mic. Yeah, just bring it, bring it, bring the coin back to the mic. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay, well, um, now, this is, this is a very warm coin, the newer, the warmer, that's what we're saying, that's the issue that Philip and I are trying to spread, is that like global warming is affecting newer coins, now this is very warm indeed, so I'm, I'm putting the origin of this coin somewhere between the 90s and the noughties, 
Hang on, you're saying you can guess the year as well as what coin it is. Could you um? Could you turn the coin? Wouldn't that? Yeah, go for it. Okay, go. Oh, wow, well, um, significant increase in warmth on a turn. That's a 97. Les Porter, thank you very much for coming on. This is the Guy Larson Show. Thank you, Les. Goodbye. <laughs>